Visit sailright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. Today we're going to show you how to make magnetic screens. And this is installed on an RV, so you can instantly put them up and take them down. It's also great for a boat or a home. Anywhere you want to put up a screen that you can see through and get a little bit of privacy, this is a screen you may want to consider making. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how it's done. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. We'll be making our magnetic window shades on an RV out of a vinyl mesh fabric called Textilane. Pfeiffertex Plus also works great for this application. The first step is patterning the window. There are several windows that are the same size as this one and the same shape, so we can use this one pattern for many of them, not all of them. So we have Durascrim pattern material and I have it cut to the approximate size. And what I want to do is just tape it in place. So I'm using 3M strapping tape to do this. I want to make sure it's pulled fairly taut so we have most of the wrinkles out. I'm going to label the center out, O-U-T, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace right where the window and the uh, stops basically between the rubber gasket. And I like to just mark the corners because everything else is pretty much straight. So I'm just uh, being very uh, careful here to keep my uh, marker up against the rubber flange of the window coming around this corner. And there I'm to my straightaway. So I'll use a straight edge to get to the, uh, the straight sides. So I just want to do the, all four of the corners for this window. So now we're going to take off our pattern material. And strapping tape does a pretty good job of coming off surfaces without causing damage. That's why I like using it. So see, there's no glue residue. Now, if it were a hot day, you might want to um, be a little bit more careful about taking it off, but we don't have a hot day. So I like to make the, um, the, the screen a quarter inch larger than what I've patterned so that the fabric actually will uh, kind of rest on the flange. I don't want to make it any bigger, and this is totally a preference, uh, not necessarily a requirement. So as you can see, um, I'm about a quarter inch from the lines that I scribed over here. Now for this curve, I'll have to just do that by hand. And we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to go a quarter inch outside the edges, and we'll do that all around the perimeter. Now we can cut out our pattern with scissors, and we'll cut right on that new line, which is about a quarter inch outside of our original lines. We'll be patterning our vinyl mesh fabric called Textiline next. I'm using a Textiline fabric, which is a mesh fabric that you can actually see through. It does provide some uh, privacy. Wherever the light is the brightest is where you'll see through. Uh, Pfeiffertex Plus also works great for this, um, but Textlean is a little bit cheaper. So now I'm going to lay the pattern. There is no right side or wrong side to this mesh material, um, so it doesn't matter what side you do. I'm going to lay the pattern out nice and flat and then put some uh, weighted uh, sandbags on it that we made. We have a video for that if you'd like to see how to make those. And uh, we want to put it as close to this edge as possible so that we have enough to make um, the rounded pieces at the corner that holds the magnet, um, which I think we'll have plenty for that out of this one yard of fabric. Now you can just trace around the, the um, textiline fabric, or you can just take your scissors, as long as you hold your, your pattern or keep the pattern in the same spot, and just trim around it like I am here. This actually works pretty well. 
Okay, so now that we have it cut out, we want to we want to save this pattern for uh, other windows because it's the same size as, as I think four windows on the RV. So let's set this aside as well and concentrate on our scrap piece here. Out of some of the scrap textiline fabric, we'll be creating the pockets for the magnets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I've got a straight line at the bottom, and I'm going to mark a strip that is three inches uh, in height, I should say. And we'll put a mark over here. So then I'm going to measure over three inches because I want this to be a, a perfect square. And I'm going to place a mark every three inches down the length. And for ours, for our size, we're going to need um, six of these. I like to use a can of spray adhesive or bug spray, and then I make a curve with this because we want these to look nice. Um, that's why I, I'm going to spend the time to make sure that this is a nice, uh, beautiful curve, like that. If we use a hot knife like this, um, the edges that sometimes show the polyester cores will not be visible, so they'll stay nice. But I don't like to cut the arches with the hot knife. So after I get these all cut apart with a hot knife, I'll show you what I do next. I'm using the Cerite Edge hot knife and we're cutting on top of the Cerite uh, cutting glass for hot knife. Along this edge, I'm just gonna use scissors um, and cut them all apart so that I can uh, fine tune the cutting of the arch with scissors. And then I'm gonna touch the edges with the hot knife. So, so here's my arch. I'm going to take my scissors and just cut a little bit outside of that arch. And I want to make this neat. And I'll do that with each one of these. And then when I, what I'll do after I get them all done is I'll take the hot knife now on the, on the cutting glass and I'll just heat it up and I'll touch those sides. Uh, and that actually keeps the stink of the vinyl melting down, and it also seals that edge at the same time. So this isn't a bad idea. You may want to do this with everything just because it, it'll keep a lot of the smoke down. And that one's ready. So we'll do that with all these. Sewing pockets on the screen is next. Now we want a magnet to be around 24 inches apart. Um, 26, 27 is okay, but I prefer for 24. Since the halfway point is 26, for us, we're okay with that. To find the halfway point, I'm going to fold the material in half and just mark the crease. And we'll do that over here as well. So this is the side that had the marking on it, the white marking. I like to place it down so it's not visible. So at, at these junctures, straight edges are going to go on just like that. But at the corners over here, what we're going to do, this is the white side with my marker on. I'm going to turn it like this. We're going to go like this and put it on the corner so it's shaped like this and then we'll trim off these little dog ears. So um, and it's okay if it's not quite to the corner because the binding is going to catch that. Okay here's our piece. The white line that I struck down I'm going to put down. This is our middle position so I'm going to position this right over that middle position and all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sew um, this outside edge. And I'm going to do that for each of these because that basically positions them. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew about a quarter inch from the outside edge because we're going to have a binding that goes on. And I don't want, really want this first stitch to show up. So we'll just uh, use this outside foot as our guide and sew this. And we don't, I don't, I'm not even going to do any reversing because our binding is going to hold this on as well. And that one's on. So here's a rounded corner and again we're going to use this even though it's got a straight edge and we're going to just put the dog ears off the side keeping this fairly close to this rounded edge here. So right here is where I'm going to sew it. So I'm going to sew here and then kind of come around this rounded edge. I can see the rounded edge sticking out there. And when I get to here, I'm going to stop. 
And don't worry if you um, are not a quarter inch, if you're really close, which I am. If you look over here on the underside, you can see I'm really close to that edge. That's okay, the binding is going to cover that, but we still have this tacked down. So we're going to do that to all the straight edges and the rounded corners, then we'll show you what's next. So all the patches are on, but we're going to flip it over to the uh, wrong side. This is a side that's going to be facing the glass. So now what we can do is we can trim off these uh, dog ears and don't worry about using a hot knife because these edges are going to be covered uh, with a binding. So that's what we're going to do for each one of the corners. We won't have to do anything for the straight sides. Now, around the outer edge, we'll install a binding. This is an acrylic centerfold binding. It actually folds pretty easily just by hand. So if you don't have a binder, you could put this on by hand. But I love to use this. This is 7 8 inch wide. I love to use it in a 3 quarter inch binder. Um, reason being is that uh, it doesn't deviate like it would in a 1 inch binder. So it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but you can get it in there. And then this keeps um, the top and the, and the bottom edges kind of uniform as you uh, sew it onto your fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the swing away binder in position here. And what I always like to do is I like to sew a little bit of a sample piece of it to see where my stitch falls. And I have my stitch set at five millimeters, uh, that's, which is what I like for this. And you can see here, I, don't, I hope you can see it, the stitch is right here. Um, that's pretty close to this edge, but we don't want it any any further. Uh, we don't want it a little. We don't want it any closer to this edge, I should say, because if we when we round corners, this stitch has a tendency to sometimes miss the corners. So you want it in uh, fairly far like this, but not so far that you may miss the fabric. After we're satisfied with the stitch, I'm going to cut it right at that stitch, which is something I don't usually do, but I like to overlap it this way. I'm going to. I've cut that. I've cut that piece off and I have an open end now. I'm going to push this into the binder and then move it back so that my needle just in, enters right at the end of that. Then I'm going to push this assembly in. It doesn't really matter where you start. Okay, I'm very close to the end of the binding and I'm not going to do any reversing. And I'm making sure that the fabric is pushed well into the exiting point of the binder. See how the fabric is kind of folded up here, but not so much that it creates a fold at the exit point? In doing that, you can make sure that your fabric is well into the fold because you're concentrating more on the exiting point of the binder and you're also keeping that fabric well into that fold by doing that. So here I'm approaching a corner and I'm going to take my time doing this. Even if I have to create kind of a bubble in the fabric, which helps to keep it in the binder. And there we are back to the straightaway again. Okay, we're coming close to where we started, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sew almost up to that point right there, and I'm going to take my hot knife, because this is going to go over top of the other one, and I'm going to cut this so that it's hopefully 90 degrees to the edge. That way it won't unravel. And then I'll just sew right over that junction there, pushing this in as I go, and then when I get to the end, I'll do some reversing here. And that completes it. The magnets that we're using for the exterior may corrode even though they're plated in nickel, so we're going to protect them in a vinyl pouch. To separate the uh, magnets, just push on the side. You cannot lift up, and you do have to be careful because they can break. They'll break when they clang against each other. Now keep it sep separate from this stack, otherwise they're going to come together quickly. If you're having a hard time getting them apart, put them on the edge of a table so that the top one is not flush with the table, and push it down. And there you go. 
one way we can check for polarity is I've, I've taken some scrap uh, of the textiline fabric and I sewed one inside of a pocket so it can't escape. So take your magnet between your two fingers here and then put your thumb on top and then hold it next to the magnet that you have in your pouch. And here you can tell that it is um, repelling. If I take it and I flip it so that it's this direction and hold it like this and do this, you can tell it attracts. So we want to mark the side that repels, which is this side. So I'm going to take a marker and I'm just going to put a mark on that. That's the side that repels. And we'll do that with all the magnets. So I have all six magnets marked. The Sayerite does not sell the neodymium magnets. We recommend finding a reputable source to the approximate specs that are shown on the screen. The neodymium ion boron magnet is coated with a nickel plating, uh, which helps protect it from oxidization. However, that nickel plating is not perfect for moist conditions and especially for saltwater conditions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Terra Type A and I'm going to uh, put a line down here about at two inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to cut a strip off of this um, and we're going to basically encase that um, magnet in a sleeve for any of the magnets that go on the exterior, or in other words, in the pocket of the vinyl, so that when they are exposed to water, they will not rust. So I'm going to peel this back to about the halfway location right there. And then I'm going to take my magnets, very, very sticky stuff, and I'm going to place it so it's just shy of that fold mark in the center. So right there. So notice that the fold is sticking out a little bit. And then I'm going to peel it all the way off, being careful not to uh, let the material touch itself. And I'm going to fold it over the magnet. Now this stuff stretches like a son of a gun, so that's the way it was designed to. So I'm going to place it over the top of the magnet, and then I'm going to carefully kind of push down on the sides. There will be wrinkles, obviously, because we're going over an object that uh, causes wrinkles, because fabric, the fabric has to basically go over that. But as you can see, we have it totally encased, and this glue will uh, stick permanently. Now, once I have it all pressed down and I have as few wrinkles as possible, I'm going to take my slice scissors, which are ceramic, and I'm going to cut it so there's about a quarter inch of extra material around the perimeter because uh, I know that this stuff likes to stretch and go back to size and stuff like that and I don't want it to come loose. And this keeps, since the scissors are ceramic, it doesn't stick to the magnet. You could also use plastic scissors that are for children. And now we have it encased completely and this is a fairly soft material, so notice it, that it uh, actually uh, compresses, which is good. Now we'll sew those magnets in the pockets of our screen. Okay, we're going to sew the pocket shut, but I'm not going to put the magnet in there until I absolutely have to, because it'll uh, basically attract and uh, to cause it to stick on the sewing machine bed. Um, so I'm going to sew right here, very close to this raw edge, and I will do some reversing here and I'll reverse a little bit into my binding, maybe one stitch or so. And I'm going to carefully slow, sew around this, making sure that the uh, pocket is flat. Notice that the center foot is basically riding along the outer edge of uh, this uh, pocket that we made. Okay, in that position with the needle down, now I'm going to take my magnet and insert it in here. And remember, with all of our magnets, we marked which side was polarized so they're all the same. So I'm going to have the mark be up, 
and the magnet's going to want to stick to our sewing machine but what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it into that pocket as far to the other side as possible then I'll continue sewing around the perimeter here And then when I get to this uh, binding, I'm going to do some reversing. I'm actually going to sew into the binding by one or two stitches. There, I'm one stitch in. And then I'll do some reversing. And that magnet is in there. And our pocket is complete. Okay, so here we are sewing one of the corners. Again, I'm going to do some reversing here. and make sure the pocket is flat as we sew around it. Then with our needle buried in the assembly, I'm gonna insert another magnet and we're gonna take the magnet with the mark up and we're going to push it into the pocket here at the corner. And now we have to fight against the magnet as we sew, but this machine really does a pretty good job of that. And we continue to sew around, making sure that the pocket is as flat as possible. And we sew into the binding a little bit and do some reversing here. And now we'll do that with all the corners and any uh, pieces that are on the straightaways. Next, we'll prepare the magnets that go on the inside of the window. So the screen has all the magnets installed and the pockets are up right now. This is the outside surface. I'm gonna flip it so the pockets are down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use one of the pockets as a reference to indicate what side needs to have the, um, uh, the 3M VHB glue attached to it. If you're having a hard time getting them apart, put them on the edge of a table so that the top one is not flush with the table and push it down. And there you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the magnet tight like this and I'm gonna find out which side attracts, this side attracts, which means that's the side that needs to have the VHB put on. So I'm gonna flip it, because that's the side that attracts. I'm gonna use an alcohol prep pad and just kinda of wipe that surface, let it dry. We have a couple choices. You can go to your hardware store and pick out a uh, double-sided tape. Um, they have a variety of uh, brands to choose from with different uh, uh, strengths. Uh, this is also a VHB um, disc by 3M. Um, that works as well. Um, so since Sarah doesn't stock this, you'll have to pick something yourself. You can either order this stuff online or you can go to uh, your hardware store or Walmart and uh, order it your, yourself. We're going to show that this basically just goes on like that. And this is what we're going to use. We'll take it out and we'll take, peel off this side and put it on our window. This time I'm going to use this uh, double-sided tape. And what I'm going to do is stick it on the back side like so. And then I like to use either plastic scissors or uh, these slice scissors, which are ceramic, then I don't have to worry about um, them being magnetized or getting stuck to the magnet. Then I'll trim around the perimeter as close as possible, and this will be ready for installation on our window. There we go. So we've either got the 3M VHB 
that you can purchase someplace or a double-sided tape like this that you can use on the window. We're going to be using the 3M BHB. And in this chapter, we're going to show you how to mount those inside magnets. So Zach is putting it on, and what I will do is I'll position that magnet all the way to the top corner. I'm going to take my magnet and position it up here, and then I'm going to move it all the way up to the top here to get it to as high as we can, close to that uh, flange. So this is the side with our VHB, our 3M glue, and there's the pocket. And I'm going to stick it under there, and now what I can do is I can actually move this. And I see how I can tension up the entire shade and get that down as far as possible. Okay, so that that's, looks like where we want to be. And I've done that already with all these other ones as well. So they're in the spots that I believe they need to be after we had somebody hold it up on the outside. Now we're going to go to the outside and make sure that we can make adjustments to make the screen nice and tight. Okay, remember that our, our magnets are not secured yet on the inside. But because of these pockets, what you can do is you can actually make adjustments to the screen and you can pull out wrinkles basically by pulling on the screen. So if you want a nice tight fit, because there's some adjustment with magnets, all you do is that. And if you want to make it smaller than a quarter inch, you can. But uh, I kind of like the position of all this and I, I like the tightness of it. I think I'm happy with that. All I have to do now is grab this magnet. It's not stuck down yet move it to the side and that releases it and that magnet is in, still in the pocket. I'm going to use some an alcohol prep pad to clean the window well and then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to peel off the uh, backing from the glue and then I'm going to carefully apply this to that magnet. Now I want to put it as close to that flange as possible and in the center position so That's perfect right there. And it'll bond nice and hard. Now we'll do that with all of them. Our magnetic window screen for this RV is now complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. As mentioned earlier in this video, Sayerite does not stock the magnets, nor do we stock the 3M VHB uh, double-sided tape. To make the job of picking the magnet out a little bit easier, we've given all the specs for the magnet that we recommend for this type of window screen. The vinyl mesh fabric we used here was called Textiline Sunsure. Pfeiffertex Plus will also work as well. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools list, be sure to give us a call at Sayerite. We're glad to help. To see other videos that are related to this RV, click the link at the top right and you'll see the entire playlist. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.